What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Bishop RV Center in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I am going to show you a unit that I walked through at an RV show in Elkhart. It was actually a dealer show, but they've made some changes to. And it is probably my favorite floor plan, minus a few little elements that we'll go over in the video. But this is a really, really cool floor plan, especially if you have a large family or you're looking for a very nice bunkhouse design with an amazing kitchen and living room. So hang tight, guys. I'll be right back. What you are looking at in front of you is the Coachman Chaparral 367BH. This has probably one of the most unique floor plans of any bunkhouse fifth wheel on the market. And I really wish they would take this floor plan and move it into their larger Brookstone line. But this is really cool. Before we take a look at the rest of the outside and then move to the inside, let's look at the numbers on this unit just to make sure you can tow it. So this has a relatively light gross vehicle weight rating of 15,500 pounds, runs on 7,000 pound axles, giving you 14,000 pounds worth of axle capacity, F-rated tires, and it has a cargo capacity of 3,117 pounds. So this truck, in my opinion, is one ton single rear wheel towable. I really wouldn't put this behind a three quarter ton truck, mainly because you're probably not gonna have the payload capacity to support it. This is probably gonna have roughly 27 to 2,800 pounds, if not more. So that's just something to keep in mind. This unit has five slides, three on this side, two on the opposite side, and there is just so much to like about this specific unit. Let's take a look around. Let's see if we can access the storage bay here. Has a very good sized storage underneath. You can tell because of this area right here that there is no drop frame, so just keep that in mind, but it does have a great size storage. It does have auto leveling as well and a power disconnect switch for whenever you're not camping and it's in storage and you wanna disconnect the power so you don't have any type of parasitic power drop. You have a really nice wet bay right here. All your controls are really nicely laid out. What you're starting to see in the industry, and this is industry wide, is that they're not separating this from the storage compartment. A lot of times they used to put a wall right here and very few manufacturers are doing that anymore. There are a few that are isolating this to its own hatch and its own door, which is pretty innovative. But for most people, I think just a little wall right here would suffice. But you have all your connections. This is designed so you can put an inline water filter system in here. You have your satellite, your power connections, everything here on the wall. And I really like that Coachman utilizes the much thicker baggage doors on all their units. Coming around, taking a look under the slide. Rack and pinion slide technology, really nice. Up front, they utilize a Schwintech slide for the bedroom. Rides on a 12-inch straight I-beam frame. What's kind of nice about this is the frame on this is set up similar to a long toy hauler and the fact that it's simply a straight beam frame. There's no drop frame section to it, but there's not a lot of potential failure or risk that you can have with the frame set up like this. Coming around. Taking a look at the wheels, you can see that this does utilize the Road Armor suspension. Same suspension that we had installed on our Chaparral. This is actually one of the ideas that I gave the Coachman crew when I was visiting them to add the Road Armor suspension, complete with the heavy duty shackles and greasable wet bolts, which is really nice. A Little further back, back of your water heater, 50 amp connection, and you have your black tank flush right here, which is really cool. LED lighting, again, that's another design cue that I talked to them about when I was in the Elkhart area working with Coachman. Of course, it's wired for Furion wireless backup camera and it does have LED lighting plus a full walk-on roof. This unit does have a two inch receiver. This is not designed for towing a vehicle. This is designed for an accessory rack. Coming around, you can see a second entrance. Now this is at the very back of the unit. So this is gonna be interesting when you get inside to see specifically what this is used for. Let's open up the hatch here so you can take a look at this really cool outside kitchen area. Considering once we get to the inside what you get, check this out. This has to be about one of the best outside kitchen units I've seen. Mainly because you can hang your TV, you can put a microwave right here, you have an outside sink, 
and you have a good size refrigerator. The only thing missing is a drawer for supplies, and they probably could have integrated one right here, or even made this flip up, you know, next to the sink, so you could put things inside of it. But again, this is designed for your microwave. But up here, maybe they could have put a drawer, or just something that you could utilize to store your utensils and things that you might grill with out here. There's also a propane connection underneath this slide that gives you the ability to hook up your outside grill. I know a lot of manufacturers put a little pull-out grill here. I'm not a big fan of that only because you end up getting grease all over the side of your unit whenever you're using it. It's not a bad idea, it's just one that, of course, you have to be careful if you're, you know, grilling hamburgers or anything that might pop grease on the side of your unit. Again, nice thick baggage doors coming around. You can see your two other slides right here. This slide right here, this area right here is a ventilation above your stove and you need to make sure that you open that up if you're camping because that's how you vent out. If your spare tire drop right here, you basically unwind that and your tire will drop down. This has the ground control 3.0 auto leveling which is an electric version of the auto leveling system versus the hydraulic version that some units get. I'm a fan of the electric because of its serviceability and you don't need a big hydraulic pump system in order to operate it. It is not as fast or as strong as the hydraulic system but it is something to keep in mind. Now I do like the fact that they use the LCI solid step fold down steps for a couple reasons. Mainly because again it's a very sturdy step construction but LCI kind of improved the design by making this top step significantly deeper than that of its competitor. It's a great system. They're both actually really good systems. They both work really well, but the LCI step definitely has kind of the advantage of having that deeper top step. Let's take a look inside of this 367BH. Before we do that though, Asdell. You gotta love Coachman for kind of being the pioneer in this space, using Asdell composite panels for essentially the exterior skin of all their units. The panel that is behind this fiberglass is completely man-made, it's composite versus the traditional real thin plywood that's used in most units, and it just doesn't rot, it doesn't collect water, it can't delaminate on you. If there is a delamination issue on a Coachman unit, it's simply how they adhered the fiberglass to the Asdell, but that is very, very, very rare. Taking a step inside of this 367BH, you'll probably see what is so great about this floor plan right off the bat. First of all, this is a bunkhouse. The bunkhouse is back there. But before we move to the bunkhouse, let's take a look at the kitchen and living room area in this unit. First of all, you have a really nice residential refrigerator. So it's not as large as they come, but it's not as small as they come as well. This is definitely a good size refrigerator and it gives you a lot of flexibility if you plan on camping for an extended period of time. It is a French door style, has a lot of room in it. And I think for most people, this is a good size refrigerator. I think it will fit most people's needs. And that's why it's also becoming very common in a lot of other brands as well. Plus you have your nice upgraded cooktop here. I think that oven and stove look really nice as well as the microwave above. Check out this little hutch area right here. This is essentially your pantry. So the one element that this unit is kind of missing is your dedicated full-size pantry. Instead, they wanted to give you some countertop space back. So you have this really nice countertop area here. You have a good size island and you still get countertop and pantry space kind of combined. So some other brands have actually done this before. Lux has actually done it where they kind of split their pantry up so they can give you more countertop. I don't know what you think about this, but it's kind of innovative. In the floor plan design, it looks as if there's a pantry right here between the TV and the refrigerator, but I guess once they put the larger refrigerator in, it took up that area. Some people might say, you know what, Let's take away some of this space and put a pantry here, or let's make a smaller TV, move the refrigerator over and put a pantry right here. I'd love to get your feedback on that though. Panning around, taking a look at the living room area, check this out. So you got more storage up there. You have a really nice love seat that turns into a bed, and you also have theater style seating right here, which is really nice. And the good thing about all of it is it's positioned perfectly to the TV. This is that traditional rear living room style floor plan that a lot of fifth wheels have and is so desirable while maintaining your full four person dinette. So when you look at this space, there's great isolation between the kitchen and the living room. You get your traditional L-shaped 
living room area with sofa and love seat. Again, this is more of a love seat, but it is wider than many love seats, so it's pretty nice actually. You could fit three people across here uh, if they're average size folks. Coming over here to the theater area, you can see that you have a good size TV in the slide as well as one of those panoramic fireplaces, but the positioning of the seating is perfect for the TV area, I believe. Coming around, again, four person dinette, really nice. Taking a look at the price on this. This has an MSRP of $72,943 has a few extra features. It's a 14.7 foot residential refrigerator. It is a mid-profile package, which is very common for the Chaparral. And this specific unit, I believe they're asking about $54,000 for. So let's take a step into the back bunk area. Check this out. This is opposing slides. So you have two slides that open up to give you this enormous back bunk area. You have another love seat down here that folds out into a bed. You have a flip up bunk right here and you have another bunk over here plus your wardrobe storage here and more wardrobe storage right here. You have a place for your TV as well as your shoes underneath or toys or whatever else you want to put there and you have this really large barn style door that closes up to provide isolation between the living area and the bunkhouse. This is an enormous bunkhouse. It really is designed for a good sized family or you could even position an office back here. You could remove that, throw a desk in there. You know, you could still keep the top bunk or flip it up so it's out of the way and you could turn this into a really nice work area. Shoot, you could probably even put a curtain across the center of this and still have the children on this side and give you an office on that side. It is such a great design and you have a second full bath. Tell me this isn't cool. So you have a bathroom with a shower, and this is very rare. Most RVs might have a half bath, but to have a second full bathroom back here is pretty phenomenal. And I think that this is one of the few RVs that have nailed it in terms of floor plan to accomplish a living room, kitchen, bunkhouse, and second bathroom that is really useful and at the same time doesn't give you kind of an awkward feel. Let me show you what I mean when I say an awkward feel. All right, so there are other fifth wheels that have a similar floor plan to this. There are. Um, two other brands that I know of make one similar to this, but they don't put the TV here. They put the TV way over here, and it's usually elevated up high right here. So you're looking over the island to watch TV from a relatively far distance. And if somebody's cooking right here, you're looking over them to watch TV. And I don't think that's ideal. In this unit, it gives you the perfect kind of positioning to be able to watch TV. If you have people in here eating or, you know, somebody's cooking right here, you have perfect separation there. And then you have the perfect bunkhouse in the back with dual slides and a very useful bathroom. That is really, really cool. Working our way up to the front of the unit. Has a good size shower. Now this isn't the largest shower stall I've seen, but it is definitely a good size shower. You can be upwards of about six foot tall to comfortably fit in this space though, so just keep that in mind. The only thing that this bathroom area is kind of missing is storage for towels and such, which you could always utilize the space under here, and they've tucked everything back out of the way a bit, so you could put your towels and things right here and your cleaners on this side, but it is nice to have a dedicated spot. And this is kind of one of those areas that to allow for everything you have here, they had to take something out of here. And the bedroom is going to be the same example of that. So in toy haulers, you often see a bedroom positioned front to back like this. And this is because it takes up far less room. If you had your traditional closet with space for your washer and dryer and everything up here, then everything would have to be set back this way a good four feet. And to do that, you lose space in the back. So this is why toy haulers do this a lot. But queen size bed, you don't have a king size offering in this model that I'm aware of. You have a nice nightstand over here. You have wardrobe over here. You have more wardrobe storage here. And what's really cool is that you actually have space for a washer and dryer in here. They didn't want to lose that element. Let me get around here real quick. The only challenge you have is that you really have to lift up the bed to get your door open right here to position the washer and dryer in here. Once it's in here, you can open up the door enough to access it, but it is something you want to keep in mind. To get it in here, you'll probably have to tilt the bed up, which it's on a hinge, so it's designed to do that because there's storage underneath there, but it is something to keep in mind. 
taking a look inside of here, it is a very nice storage area. And because this was designed to house a washer and dryer unit, it is very deep. So if you don't use it for that, you have a tremendous amount of storage you can use in here. And you have these removable shelves that give you the ability to position your washer and dryer unit in here if you end up wanting to install one. You have your TV mount right here. You could probably fit upwards of about a 32 inch TV in here. I really like that they've made the day-night roller blinds standard on these units now. That used to be an option, and it was a relatively expensive option. Overall, though, this is a fantastic floor plan. It is absolutely one of my favorite. I think they've nailed it in just about every respect, and it is absolutely a floor plan that a lot of toy hauler manufacturers should take note of because this is, I think, what most people are looking for if they're getting a toy hauler. They want to have the ability to put a garage in the back but to still have this really great living room layout that positions the TV in a practical area versus hanging somewhere over in the back corner or three feet in front of the sofa or three feet in front of the love seat. Anyways, guys, I would love to get your feedback on this unit. I know the one thing that a lot of people would probably want is a pantry, which this one doesn't really have. Would you sacrifice some of this space here to maybe have a pantry right here with one door and you'd still have this countertop space here? Or is this the perfect setup for you? Guys, please leave a comment below. If you haven't had a chance, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you again very, very soon.